David De Gea signed a contract extension that was offered to him by Manchester United only reportedly for the club to then back out the proposal. De Gea agreed to a reduction on his current £375,000 a week wages, but the club didn't sign the contract. They've now submitted a new proposal to De Gea and discussions said to be ongoing. Well, respect basically comes as a word used when two parties have agreed because there's respect, so they found a solution. But, yeah, very little respect when you could, could, you're negotiating contracts. It can, I mean, there, there can be certain... There's certain examples of certain players that I know who've, who've got deals over the line because there's a mutual respect and understanding with either this, you know, the uh, chief executive or even the manager. You know, Mark Hughes got me my deal done quickly at Fulham without no fuss because he wanted me there and he made it happen. Otherwise, that would have been a bit harder when I right. was negotiating right. that one. So there's some respect from Mark to me and vice versa, you know, because I went in to see him and told him my predicament and my situation because I had an offer from America there at the time in the January. So uh, there was respect there. But generally, it's about whether it suits, it fits financially and economically in the club's yeah. hierarchy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Did I ask... Former owner, Mister Short, <laughs> have you ever been in that position, Simon? You've 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 tabled a you've tabled a contract offer to a player and his agent, and you've thought twice about it. That, Do you know what? I'm having that back. I'm, yeah, we're going to change that. And uh, that's after they'd signed it. Um, well, it can't be after he signed it. Can well, it? no, because the club hasn't signed it, and that's curious as to why the agents let that one slide through. Because ultimately, if the agents negotiating the deal. And the player signed the contract, and he hasn't got the club to sign it. Then he's the one that's in the in hock. Well, it's, it, it's reported that he actually signed this deal. I know to him by United. I'm yeah. sure. I'm sure he did because if the if they've negotiated a deal and they've eventually reached a point where they think they've got what they what is reasonable for them to accept, he would have signed it. But it becomes irrelevant if the other side haven't signed it, mm. which is where the agent comes into play. No, I, I've not because I've made an offer and expected it to be accepted or not accepted there and then. And if it's not accepted there and then, and I'm you know mucking about for three or four months and the landscape changes the fact is that these guys have accepted it which which seems to me bad administration and bad bad controls from the agent that ultimately he hasn't got the club to sign the agreement otherwise we wouldn't be having this discussion mm. I, I never like i have to say i never like people making an offer and then withdrawing from that offer because i think that's bad form i think there's a way to operate and there's a way not to operate mm. if you say you're going to do something you should do it but of course if 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 the player didn't sign the contract and has only recently signed the contract because it now suits him to, then the landscape has moved. So if United offered to him three months ago a, a new a contract extension with XYZ amount of hundreds of thousands of pounds per week and the player decided to sit on it for a little bit, then that's that's his fault. And he's, I've signed it now. Well, that was then and this is now. The, the world's moved on. So it all depends upon the circumstances. I think the key for Man United, Jim, is very, very simple. And I've said this categorically before. And it's he's, he's been fantastic there. And, you know, he's had a good good innings at United but for them to move forward and be competitive with the best team in Europe at the moment which is Manchester City and, and to try and compete and get to anywhere near they need a new goalkeeper yeah yeah because Anana, Anana might be the one he, yeah could well be but he's going to he is some goalkeeper and, he, and he's obviously knows Tenag he's worked under him before hasn't he that's going to cost him a fortune yeah yeah uh, Danny one or two people asking and I'll ask it to you this Liverpool rebuild what's going on with it Alexis McAllister, yes, and? Well, if you look, I mean, historically, June isn't that busy a time. Early July, it really starts going. And then, you know, towards the end of July, you'll start, because the contracts finish on the 1st of July for free agents, for for lots of things. So I, I'm not that worried about it yet, but where you're going with it is, do they need more? Yes, they do. Will more be coming in? Yes. Who exactly, I don't know, but it it would be... Silly to underestimate Liverpool in this window because they have lost a fair chunk of that midfield. So there'll be at least another one or even two coming in in that I midfield. I was going to ask you, what does a rebuild look like in your eyes? Well, there's there's midfield's the key. I think they need two more to make them really competitive, but at least one and one established good quality one. Talking another over £50 million player, I would imagine. Hmm. Somebody with real presence. Um up front, we're going to have to wait and see whether they decide whether they need to replace Firmino because he was part of a... They have got good options higher up the pitch. I, I've got a feeling they won't. I think they'll probably go for another centre-half, maybe. 
Right. I mean, it's Canati, the defender, has been speaking to RM, uh, RMC Sport in, in France. Um, and judging, judging by what he's saying, it's like, um, should we not be getting a move on? He says, I believe we have four players leaving this season. Oxlade, Chamberlain, Keita, Milner, Firmino. So we've got to replace them. If we don't replace them, what do we do? Are we understaffed? Lacking in quality? We cannot play with young people at this level. So he's beginning to rattle a, a bit of an alarm bell there. Well, he's young himself. So I don't know whether that's been misinterpreted a bit. But you, you can, of course you can play with young players if they're of high quality. It's just how you balance it around that. Liverpool have got Darwin Nunez. They've got Gapco can both play up front. They've got Salah. They've got Jota. And they've got Diaz. Yeah. So there's five for three. Do they want six for three? I think five for three you could do that. Midfield's the key and what they do at centre-half. Whether or, or there is talk, some people saying they should get a right back and play Trent in the middle of the park. What do you think about that? <clears throat> I don't think it's a bad option. I think, depending on who that right back is and who's available, that could be a way to go. It would give them something. It would give them something else, wouldn't it? It would well, give it, them a new look. It, it, a new look. I also think it's going to be Trent's best position moving forward, or position he occupies more often than fullback moving forward. So, therefore, do you know, need to go and buy another two midfielders? Probably only one. If you're going to play Trent in midfield with another. Yeah. Probably only one more midfielder, but you'd have to get a right back in. I mean, it, it, it can actually say in that, but it's a big gap to bridge, isn't it, Simon? 22 mm -hmm. points have finished behind City. Yeah, but Liverpool have had a very, very poor season. Mm. So, you know, I'm surprised at times it wasn't more than that because Liverpool was so far away from where they need to be. I don't think they will be as far away this year. No. But I still think they will not be um, the Liverpool side that c created the duopoly that we were talking about a couple of years ago in this, you know, race to the top between City and Liverpool. Far away from Frog. Win winning the title. Mm. You don't think they'll be far away from it? No, I think Liverpool will be. I don't think Liverpool... I don't think Liverpool, I, think, I don't think they'll be 22 points behind Manchester City, but I don't think they'll be where they were once before, which is neck and neck. I think there's going to be a couple of years before they're in that space again, because I think Man City are just in a different, a different zip code right now. Mm. Mm. I think it'll be tight than you think next season. I mean, they get, they've got to get the... The, <clears throat> the only reason turning. I say that is... To, well... One, I think everyone's going to have the bit between the teeth to do better because there was a lot of failures last season. A lot of clubs, uh, you know, didn't didn't do what they were set out to do. Yeah. Um, and from City's perspective, when you've won a treble, well, I haven't, I haven't done what they've done, but when you've been successful, there is a tendency, I mean, super successful. They've won the lot. There, there is, what they call it, human nature, yeah, subconsciously, whatever, however you want to try and explain it, there's a drop-off. Mm. Very hard to maintain that level of amazingness that they've been at for, this, for last season. And if Bernardo Silva goes as well as Gundogan, I know Kovacic is great. I know, yeah. I know they'll go and buy another one. Danny, Pep's not going to stand for any no, drop-off. No, but, but whoever you bring in, Kovacic, who I really like, by the way, he's not a goal-scoring midfielder like Gundogan. And finding another Bernardo Silva, they don't grow on trees. No. It's not as easy as you think just to bring in a couple and expect them to adapt and click your fingers and go, yeah. please replace them too. Yeah. But not so the Silvers don't grow on trees. I agree. They don't, do they? I agree. 12.30. <laughs> Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.